I want to share with you my what I've learned about constructing cabinets in a redneck mansion, a double wide. Also keep in mind this is a repossessed double wide so it was moved from where it was originally the original owners had it and it was moved to a dealer's lot. <clears throat> this man sold repossessed and new mobile homes on his lot and it sat on his lot for six months that I know of. And during that time the center wall, a support wall, was not attached like it would have been if it was set up permanently like it is here and the roof they just put a temporary barrier against rain and and it did not work uh, depending on the storm and how the rain pushed in on it there it warped the walls up the down the hall the walls on that back room you can look at it it's it's really bad <laughs> they tried to do some straightening up before they attached the two sides and it's the only wall that actually um the middle wall and the exterior walls have actual two by fours. Everything else has, I think, two by threes or one and a half by threes or something. It's um, the walls are not as thick inside, but this one's a double one because of the center of support on both sides. The living room is on the other side of this room, but um, because this is an eight foot run of shelving, I went ahead and put a third brace in there. And you can see I used the pocket holes. So the shelf here is supported by this, but it also supports the base shelf with these pocket hole screws. And the walls are, like I said, warped. So this is actually a spacer because there's that much of a gap between where the wall um, met the board here and where it meets the board again over here but where they have the two by fours with the drywall this is this drywall comes pre-papered with this stuff it's not you know you can't take this paper off it is part of the drywall that's try to glue that piece back on there and it's a mess you can, you have to replace the whole drywall sheet so I'm not going to do it and I'm going to put some spackling in there kind of fill in the crack because it just bothers me I don't I don't think it's going to make any difference um you know, except for where it shows where I'm going to paint it. And where I've painted already, I can see the seam right there. I don't know if it's picking it up. But because I know where it's at, I know where to look. That, but there's ways to hide it. And that's fine with me. Uh, I like, do get the Craig pocket hole jig. Uh, they're, they have the mini, which is just a single hole thing. Um, then I think this, the one I'm using is the R3, and I went ahead and bought the clamp that goes with it. So that was about sixty dollars together. It's a forty dollar kit, and it's well worth it. It is so so worth it because I couldn't, I couldn't do the supports and put it in there and doing the French cleats. I could have done it, you know, because then you screw in from the back side, from the back of this board with the French cleat and going into the wood from the back side and it took a lot of finagling to get that done on this side this side was so much easier to have the base because even though this is supporting what's above it this also because of me being able to do the pocket holes also holds this up and then attaching it with pocket holes again down here so uh, yes and the countertops, standard, the top of your countertop on your base cabinets is supposed to be 36 inches. And then it's another 18 inches between countertop to the bottom of your cabinet. And that's what this, this is 18 inches, 54 inches from the floor, which also isn't exactly level and even at all places, but this is visually when I put the one inch rail on this you won't be able to tell that they're a little wonky here and there but um, because of the 24 inches on center I put a third support most upper cabinets have the a base support and some sort of railing the top of that one is at 30 inches from the bottom of that one so that's at seven feet uh, 84 inches is that one and that's leveled and you notice the difference. I didn't have to put a strip here um, 
to uh, make up for the gap. Those those were fine. So that's how much it, the water down here has caused damage. And uh, because of the 24 inch thing I went ahead and put a third one. Uh, most standard cabinets you have uh, a cleat uh, that you hang your cabinets from and then the, the cabinets themselves will just have a, a thin um, veneer or particle um, panel on the back and then they would also have a strip on the back of the thing three or four inches wide um, like this and then that's also screwed in wherever there's a stud. Now because I made these 18 inches on center this one like if, if I this cabinet here there's no stud there's no stud for it to screw into in the back of there's no it would not have a proper support so um, this way it it gets the, as much support as it, it is possible I did put in this is from the corner cabinet and there's a couple of inches in is a stud that it's screwed into so this this end doesn't get any support till over here because it's a it's less uh, it's like 19 or 20 inches from there to there uh, anyway <laughs> forget the math it, there's not a stud over here on this side so I use pocket holes to attach it there so it's attached to this and then the stud is about right there underneath so you see how this is I'm trying to put in as much support um, as I can because I, I don't, I don't <laughs> the thought of this falling down on me or anyone else or just falling down at all just is terrifying so I went ahead and put in a center support about a foot foot up so these cabinets um, I know I cut these boards 50 and a half inches is what the new boards are so they're a little short but I didn't have to worry about cutting the angles off of them like I did these two because they were fine in the back but a li they were hitting the ceiling at the front so I went ahead and cut them at a 15 degree angle and I even thought about putting another strip <laughs> a little further up but I don't, I don't think that's necessary but if I I can I mean there's room and over here all these cabinets I put a little strip of wood in between the um, cleats and I'll probably do that here too uh, eventually with the scrap wood I'll, I'll just rip a bunch on my table saw and put them on here I only had to use glue on two of them the rest of them I just kind of tapped in they were tight enough between the wall and the and the boards the verticals to fit in just tapping them in because I don't I don't like it being able to, you know, <laughs> that I can put my fingers through here. So I will put something in there. And but that's not necessary for now. But uh and it's a lot easier, you know, without the base cabinets. This last of the shelves drying. And without the base cabinets, it's a lot easier to get in, in here. And I'm clearing all this so that we can swap refrigerators later tonight. But it's been a great learning experience and I just wanted to share you know what what I'm doing a little differently because it is a mobile home and it's a me repossessed mobile home so it's not it's in, in worse condition than a regular one would have been to start out with but let's hope that I've never bought a new mobile home but um, just showing you how things are in here and what I've learned and besides putting the brace underneath which that's a temporary one over there at the end uh, I don't know what else to do to make make it uh, sturdier but this is it's there's no shake <laughs> there's, no <laughs> there's no wobble and I could have done that with the cabinets that were here so I went from two little you know I think it was like 30 inches on that and then 30 inches on the other side of this refrigerator and that was my upper cabinets that was it uh, and these were the cabinets that came with the 
this and then that was a caddy corner the dishwasher on the right side the sin a double sink and a, a corner I could not access I would do crud and stuff would build up I, I couldn't open the windows because I couldn't reach the latches on the far side so now and then um, a 36 inch base cabinet which I couldn't access half of it because of the cabinets I had on this wall so a lot of changes and still debating if I should put a fourth cleat up there. But I could not have bought cabinets that would have been this tall for me. Even if I bought the 30 inch and then the 15 inch uh, tall ones that you can buy for above the refrigerator, mainly they're used for above the refrigerator, it would not have come out. I would have still been short. Uh, let's see, another half a foot, six inches up top, almost. So anyway, I'm just showing you how I'm doing it. I am not a carpenter. This is my first big wood project. I am sure there are better ways of doing stuff, but this is working. <laughs> and I'm open to suggestions. I'm not saying, I'm, but I'm just giving you why I'm doing it this way. I'm excited. I'm happy to see that this this came together in one day. I did this all yesterday and had it painted last night. So uh, I wish I'd have done this. I could have spared myself a couple of days work if I'd have done it that way too. So anyway, the pocket hole jig from Craig. Definitely get it. Get it, get it, get it. Thanks for watching.